Hello everyone, today is day 9 and you have your brother Bashabas and Patasi at post and we have for today uh, the ignorance of God as our focus. We have gone through the introduction for the second week and we know that today we are focusing on the ignorance of God. What happens when people are ignorant of God? So we shall hear the text first. We have so much to do, some points to bring out. But let's hear the main text first. Uh, from Acts 17, 21 to 31. Acts 17, 21 to 31. It should be explained that all the Athenians, as well as the foreigners in Athens, seem to spend all their time discussing the latest ideas. 22. So Paul, standing before the council, address them as follows men of athens i notice that you are very religious in every way for as i was walking along i saw your many shrines and one of your altars had this inscription on it to an unknown god this god whom you worship without knowing is the one i'm telling you about 24 he is the god who made the world and everything in it since he is lord of heaven and earth he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God, and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. 28. For in him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by a craftsman from gold or silver or stone. 30. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and tend to him. 31. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Amen. Amen and amen. This text is so important that in fact all persons are coming to Jesus should be taught it. They should even know how things started especially now that we are talking about Ghana and we want to declare it as a, a national month of repentance people who are going to be involved in this prayer must even know the existence of Ghana itself and the Bible tells us clearly here that the God who made the world and everything in it being Lord of heaven and earth does not live in temples made by man nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything and then verse 26 says and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. This means that even Ghana's existence was planned by God. Sometimes we may find it very easy historical to say because the whites came in and then they, they did that, they did that. They, we're always focusing on slavery. They took us, they, they stole our things, they, that, they did that. But instead of going back to see that even if the people should come here to do whatever they came to do, God knew it, but he was more interested in what was going to follow. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods, which means even the duration of the nation Ghana is, is planned by God. How long Ghana will exist for it to be uh, gone from the earth? God knows it. The people therein, he knows them. All the tribes, 
He knows all the tribes. Because there's, there's a point. It says that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. That is it. He, he has allowed the nations to be there. He determining Ghana should be in West Africa here and there. It is not, it is not accidental. There's nothing accidental with God. There's nothing. It doesn't exist like that. But not many people are really conversant with some of these things. So, whilst we are in Ghana and want to be intercessors, the foundation we must get now is that our ignorance can lead, mislead us. But first of all, let us understand that where Ghana is, is already planned by God. The duration is planned by God. So what should we do? We, are, we must be collaborating with God who allowed Ghana to be where it is. Knowing God's mind will give us the ability to pray according to his will. And the Bible says that when we pray according to his will, he, it is done. Okay. Now when we read down a little bit to verse 30, it says, the times of ignorance, which is when people went astray, because they didn't know much about what God is about. God's ways of life, God's system. People went bowing down to trees, talking to trees, bowing down to river, talking to river. Sometimes we forget that a man, a human being, is made in the image of God. Can you imagine a person made in the image of God bowing down to a river and calling, telling the river to save him? Calling, telling the river to, to bless him? Telling the river to, to give him a wife? Give, telling the river to give him a husband? Because we fell from our position, so certainly when you fall from a high position, you fall, you come lower, so anything goes. But if we had stayed where God placed us, the rivers will have to obey us because Adam had to control everything on this earth. And he had to have dominion over even the, the best of the air, the, the fish in the waters. But when we fell, everything also was gone. So now we started worshiping the things of our own hands. But the point that fits into our theme, our topic is that the times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Which means there, there was time God allowed people to be bound down to trees. There was a time he allowed them to be bound to, uh, to uh, animals. He, he allowed it. But now that Jesus has come and has paid the price and has liberated us from the bondage of darkness, now what we should do is to repent, meaning change our mind, change our focus, change our direction, change our purpose, and now believe in the things of God. This is the meaning of repentance. That is, you have taken a direction, you see that it is not the right direction, you change your mind and take to the one that is true. Now, some Christians think that we do not even need to be repenting now because they don't understand that we have pre-resurrection repentance and post-resurrection repentance. The pre-resurrection means people who didn't know Christ and they were in the world, they had to repent of their sins, they had to repent of the abominations they were going through and come to Jesus. But now the post-resurrection repentance is someone who knows Jesus and has made a mistake. Has, has gone wrong somewhere, he also ha will have to change his mind. But it is not the same as, uh, that, that leads to baptism of repentance uh, and forgiveness of sins. This one is someone who knows the right thing to do and has done it wrongly and has, is coming back to the Lord Jesus Christ to beg him for forgiveness. So here, people who didn't know Christ are now given the opportunity to repent. So everyone is, should, not, should not repent. No excuse for anyone. You cannot say, that's the way our grandfathers had, uh, uh, have been doing it. That's the way our ancestors, that's the way we, we met. But Bible now is now teaching us that where people are, and they are talking about their ancestors, God placed them there. It is God who placed them there, and now he's commanding them to repent. Thanks be to God. So when we talk about ignorance of God, what does it do to us? People who do not know the true God. What do they do? First of all, number one, ignorance of God leads to error. Matthew chapter 22, 23 to 33. Matthew 22, 23 to 33. 
Matthew 22, 23-33 His reply amazed them, and they went away. That same day, Jesus was approached by some Sadducees, religious leaders who say there is no resurrection from the dead. They posed this question. Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies without children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers. The oldest one married and then died without children. So his brother married the widow. But the second brother also died, and the third brother married her. This continued with all seven of them. Last of all, the woman also died. So tell us, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? For all seven were married to her. Jesus replied, Your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures, and you don't know the power of God. For when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Thank you. Jesus has put the emphasis there clearly. The, the reason they are in error is that they do not know God and his power. So when someone is ignorant of God, the first thing you do, the things you, you say, the things you point at will be er erroneous. And then, but one particular example here that will suit us to, is uh, in Exodus chapter 5 verse 2. Is that so? Retorted Pharaoh. And who is the Lord? Why should I listen to him and let Israel go? I don't know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Thank you. So the reason Pharaoh was able to say no, that he didn't, the Israelites were talking about a particular God. And said, well, I mean, why should I listen to him? I don't even know him. So his, that ignorance led him to take that decision. Because if he knew the God of Israel, the, the, the Yahweh we talk about, so that was, this is even also a proof that not everybody on this world knows the, uh, the God of the Bible. Now, the word God, D-O-D, is so deceiving that uh, anybody can use God. But the question again should be, who is that God? For instance, concerning Jesus Christ, Christians know that they worship the God and the Father of Jesus Christ. And so Jehovah has confirmed that he has a son called Jesus. So any other God who does not have Jesus as his son is not the God of Christians. So this is the power of uh, not knowing the true God that we talk about in the Bible. What we have to repent about is that we have to tell the Lord we have gone astray, we have taken a lot of decisions not from you. Because we do not know your mind, people just get up and decide to go their way. Not knowing that, without knowing the true God, you may not also say the things of his heart. May the Lord have mercy upon us and forgive us our sins. Amen.